Hey, what's going on everybody? So we recently did a backyard tour. You can look in the top right corner and click that if you have not watched that video yet. And I really feel like today would be a perfect time to just show some scenes of our backyard and talk about what our plans are for the backyard in a little bit more detail. So today, let's talk about our plans for our backyard. It was a very, very windy day today, but the sun was out, some clouds were out, the trees were providing some really, really nice and much needed shade. It was about 85 degrees outside. Beautiful, beautiful day. So this clip is from the backyard tour video. You can see here, this is a stick pile. This is what Trey and I have collected over the past few months. Uh, just from the yard, you know, there's so many trees in the yard. They produce a lot of sticks, you know, just dead limbs falling, windstorms, that sort of thing. There were more today. And next to it, you'll see there's the log pile. Um, so this log pile, you know, those uh, the log rack and all that stuff, this was all there when we moved in. There's a lot of ivy and stuff growing as well, some vines growing up over the log pile. And, you know, we knew we wanted to move that. We just didn't know when or where we wanted to move that. So then you can see here, these are the bags of leaves we had left over from this last fall. And we had probably a total of 100 bags of leaves. This includes the leaves and debris that we bagged from the back fence of the property that had built up over the many years. Um, so these were the bags that were left and some of them were very heavy. I'm talking, you know, 50 pounds plus because there's, it's not just leaves, it's debris and, you know, compost that just, it was not doing very well. Um, so we've bagged a lot of that up. You can see the grass and the weeds are growing up. And even in the back corner there, you can see there's more debris and stuff built up that I just didn't have bags for. So there's a lot of that. And then in the corner, you can see this is the debris that we had left from the debris piles. There were three big debris piles in the yard and there were three tree stumps that I removed. Um, actually four, if you include the one from the front yard. So I, this, the wood that I had left over from that and the wood from the compost pile, you can see I kind of built a perimeter with the compost bin wood, which I saved to reuse. But the wood in the back there in the corner there, you know, that was really just, you know, unusable wood at this point. And I knew I needed to get rid of it. It was an eyesore and just not pleasant to look at, as you can see there. You can, see, you can even see a bird bath in there. We've saved the bird bath. We're going to reuse that. Um, anything we could use and salvage, we, we saved. Anything we need to get rid of, we got rid of. So Trey and I spent this last weekend, loaded up my truck with all the big debris and took it to a local mulch site or a mulch dump. You know, these mulch dumps are really cool because they're free. So if you have one in your uh, municipality, you can go to it and drop off branches, wood, whatever, and it's free if you're a resident of, the, of that municipality. They will then mulch it up over time and you can actually go back and take mulch for free. It's untreated mulch. They have tons of it, so you can take as much as you want and it's absolutely Free. There's the truck that was loaded down, my truck that was loaded down. This is the log pile after I removed it and we moved it to another location. You can see it's a big difference. The grass will hopefully fill that in a little bit. Here's another shot of it. And in the corner there, you can see that's the debris pile that was there and that's all gone. So we, after I got back from the mulch dump, Amber and Trey helped me remove all this stuff and whatever was salvageable, we saved. We moved the log pile to another location, which you'll see here in a second. We also moved the stick pile. What we could save, we saved that for the fire pit and stuff. Most, all the wood that's on the log pile and in the stick pile is going to be used in our fire pit. We really have no other use for that wood. It's, it's old, it's very dry and rotted. We have a fireplace in the mobile home, but we're not, we're not keen on using it right now. It was inspected and they said it was good to go. 
but we really just have no need and now that it's you know late spring coming up on summer we just don't have a need for this wood so we'll use it for our get togethers in the backyard with the fire pit in the meantime though you can see there in the corner you know this big difference just clearing all that debris out it opens it up hopefully the grass will grow in and fill that in here is the log pile now so you can see we've moved it back kind of behind the shed a little bit so from the patio when you're looking out over the backyard you see the shed but you cannot see the log pile or the debris pile next to it which is sticks a little bit of compost that we decided we decided to save because we'll mix it into the new compost here in a little bit so it turned out really well blocks the view here's the corner you can see here it's completely gone i mean imagine what it was it was this is a total 180 from that looks so much better obviously the grass will eventually grow in which we're going to discuss here in a minute what the plan is for that so so back to the corner of the yard we're trying to decide what exactly we want to do we had a garden in our last home and we really enjoy having a garden and now that we have so much space we have nearly one acre to use this back corner having removed everything is kind of perfect for um, setting up some new raised garden beds we have a very sandy soil and it's actually really good soil for gardens and vegetable gardens specifically um, things like asparagus we're really excited about hopefully getting some asparagus going because they love that sandy type of soil and we're really excited about just getting the edibles planted again so this is kind of my idea for what we're going to do um, for the corner of the yard setting up our garden here you can see we're going to be creating some raised garden beds this is the plan not set in stone yet this is kind of phase one just planning it out so we'll start with probably just two eight by three garden beds raised garden beds and we'll see how that goes how they take to the you know to the soil and that sort of thing we're going to bring in probably two-thirds of soil and then use one-third of existing soil and try to blend the two um, and obviously try to throw in a little bit of compost and mix all that in as well and just try to see if we can create a really fertile soil so the vegetables can take root and do really well and thrive and we will be doing a more high intensity gardening approach um, we really enjoy the mi gardener on youtube we watch a lot of his stuff we you know it, he is very knowledgeable and you know, for somebody who's, you know, living in, you know, a suburban area, he, he just has such amazing insight on how to get the most for your buck, the biggest bang for your buck. And so we, we watch a lot of his stuff and you can, in the description, I'll include a link to his channel. So we're going to be using the MI gardener's approach for a more high intensity gardening approach to try to produce more vegetables and more edibles in the long run. So we have this long back fence on the north side of our property. It's probably 200 feet long and it gets sunlight for, I would say two thirds, maybe a little bit less of the day, it gets direct sunlight. And so we're talking about planting a few fruit trees in this area along this fence and maybe even like a blackberry bush or a blueberry bush. So when we talk about edibles, you know, this is a great option for us. We realize and talking to our neighbors that this is very rich soil and you know there's a lot of water um, underneath and it just everything that's planted here does very very well so we're excited about testing that out this year and seeing what kind of edibles we're gonna be able to get including these fruit trees um, bushes and you know the vegetable garden um, before we get into you know things like animals which Amber is gonna talk about right now yeah, and we're thinking about possibly getting some animals as well. We currently have a dog, and we want to get some chickens uh, to possibly have some eggs from that, but we don't know how the dog will do with chickens. Um, but eventually we want to do that, and possibly even a goat, but we're not sure if the city would allow that or not, so we'll have to look into that one more. But we'll start with the garden and start producing some edibles from that, and then decide a little later what addition of animals we might want to have. Something I would love to have really soon is a little playset for the kids um, with a slide and swings. And they love playing in the backyard already, and so something like that that they would really have fun on, I would love to get. You know, we love the idea of simplifying life, and the more we can get away from that consumeristic approach and more of the uh, material materialism that comes alongside consumerism, 
and really focused on like what are we able to give to ourselves in order to bring ourselves more happiness and just be more successful in life because you know most people that have gardens that are successful with their gardening they'll tell you that when you bite into a fresh tomato that you've grown yourself and you've you know plucked yourself and you know you've used it in a dish or whatever or even if you're just biting into it there's so much success that comes alongside that um, there's these feelings of overwhelming success because you you've grown that from nothing and you've been able to um, reap the rewards and the benefits of your labor. My family is all about working for what we have. We do not feel like entitlement has any place in our lives at all. And we feel like we, we should work for what we have. And that includes, you know, to some extent our food. Uh, we are willing to put in the labor as you've seen, you know, that those two days were very hard labor getting rid of that, all that debris and clearing out that spot. And as we cleared it out, we felt like this is a perfect spot. As we're moving this stuff, we're like, this is a perfect spot for a garden. It just felt like divine inspiration. Like this is the perfect spot for a garden. So that's the plan. Um, I'll show it one more time here. This is kind of the plan with the um, raised garden beds, bring them in and start growing some fresh produce, bring in some fruit trees, possibly a bush or two, um, blackberries or blueberries and just provide a spot for my family to go and enjoy food. I mean, this is not going to be immediate guys. So this may be some of the stuff may take years to fully develop, but we're willing to put in that hard work. We're willing to put in that, that time and that effort and, you know, be patient with it. Um, you know, not everything comes immediately. We have to be patient for what we get and the reward is not always immediate. Our rewards often come in time and we just have to wait, you know, and be patient with that. And the more patient we are, I think the greater the reward. So thank you so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments below, please. We would love to know. We, we have a green thumb to a certain extent. And I have a feeling that there's several of you watching these videos and following our journey that are very good at this, that have a very green thumb, that are very knowledgeable um, with your experience in gardening and planting and that sort of thing and raising livestock. You know, something we haven't said is that, you know, we actually, my family has a cattle ranch a couple hours away from here that we go and visit quite often and eventually we'll do a video on that. And when I was a kid, we grew up and we had turkeys and chickens and goats and cows and horses and everything. Now we've narrowed it down to just cows and we just recently got some pigs um, and the kids love seeing the pigs and you know we produce our own meat from that ranch and so our own beef and pork from that ranch now. So livestock isn't necessarily new to me but in the sense of in this sort of environment we're just not sure how that would play out but we're excited about just sharing this journey with you guys. So if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, I can keep talking for hours. I'm not going to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and we will see you guys in the next video.